My name's Brian Smith, and uh, I've been whitewater kayaking for about 10 years. I've paddled all around the world. The Ashley River is my local uh, run and probably my favorite run here in the Sea to Sky Corridor. There's so many features about that river that make it what it is. It's a combination of having some of the best whitewater features that are created from polished granite slabs to having this beauty of being down in like a 600 foot deep canyon. You've got moss hanging on the rocks, you've got giant trees everywhere, you know there's bears hanging out in the woods somewhere. When I first found out there was going to be a dam on the Ashley River, I was like, no, there can't be, no way. I mean, you just can't ruin a place that's that beautiful. And it led me to start trying to understand the bigger picture, and I realized it was way bigger than just the Ashley River. And basically, not knowing what else to do, I, I picked up a camera. And this film is a journey for me following the issue for over a year, trying to figure out Who's behind this project? Why is a project like this going through? Energy is just at one input into the, the economic you know, stream of society. Uh, you know, there's plastics, there's, there's intellectual you know, property, there's, you know, metal, there's electrons, there's all kinds of stuff. You know, you have to think of energy as, as uh, just one of the commodities. The BC energy plan is quite simplistic in that it doesn't, there isn't really balance in it. It's, it's focused on the perception that developing every available natural resource um, is good because it generates money. The problem with that and with things like Run of the River uh, is that uh, it is a public resource and a public asset. There are rivers. The rivers belong to all British Columbians. They're essentially being given away uh, for very, very little, given away for a song to private operators who will make vast, vast amounts of money off of these rivers. I think that the way the Ashley project went down left people with a really bitter taste of you know how these projects were being approved. The local government held several public hearings, they listened to the people, they said no to the project, and then the government sort of backhandedly approved the project through Bill 30. Uh, the local community in the area um, spoke to the, the regional district directors about how special a place the Ashley was and that yes in fact there were other values that could be considered in approving or, or not approving in the review of a project. Rivers like the Ashley which are contentious you know the locals have their say and they expect what they've said to be acted on but that's not where it ends you know they they have input but they don't have veto. After Bill 30 was passed, it was clear that the voice of the people uh, was not going to be heard by the government. And uh, starting in late August, early September 2006, uh, Lead Corps became present in the Ashley Valley. The security guards showed up and uh, the trees started coming down. The fishermen, we were concerned in terms of losing those special places that we have, and that's probably the first thing that would pop into our in any of our minds. Part of the reason, like I said earlier, um, trout don't grow in ugly places. 
There was concern um, that the IPP could have an influence on, on the ability of the bears to move from the back of the ash slough to the front of the ash slough to feed on salmon. It would have been preferable to develop, let's say, two other rivers with lesser environmental and recreational values and leave the ash slough in its natural state. So we have in excess of 400 run of the river projects potentially in British Columbia. And every one of those projects in every community, those communities have no meaningful say any longer on those projects.